Hi, I'm Brent Brooks, uh, high rise firefighting. I'm a Canadian uh, firefighter uh, from Canada. I, my presentation is on high rise firefighting tactics. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, glad to be here. And uh, I'll put my contact at the end of this presentation. And if you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call. Uh, that's my bio here. I'm an international speaker and hands-on instructor. I teach uh, high-rise tactics, and most importantly, I teach large diameter hose movements. I'm a captain with the Toronto Fire Service. I've been a firefighter now for 28 years. I started at Pearson International Airport, Bump RJ Aerospace, and I'm assigned to Toronto's high-rise unit. Uh, I do all the R&D operations. Uh, I share information with countries all over the world, departments all over the world. Um, I am part of the Council of Tall Buildings. It's based out of Chicago, but they have chapters in all the major cities. Um, the Council of Tall Buildings has been fantastic for me uh, when I have been developing my high-rise tactics because I'm working with the building designers and architects um, to actually help me uh, come up with strategies and ideas for fighting high-rise buildings. All buildings are different. Um, I also attend the HROC high rise firefighting conference in the US where I'm a hands on instructor and I used to be a I'm a retired member of the Canadian Armed Forces. Let's get started. Uh, that's what my truck looks like there. We have two in the city. They are dedicated um, high rise response trucks. Uh, all the equipment that can't fit on a normal fire truck is actually found on on this apparatus. We have two of them. We split the city. If uh, one high rise unit's at a uh, call, then the other high rise unit will actually um, take over the entire city. Um, our secret, or, or not really a secret, it's kind of um, uh, well known knowledge now is big water. I like Paul Kuhn's um, art, uh, uh, artwork here. Um, although it's it looks humorous, it it always tends to tell the truth. Uh, this firefighter here says, do you mean uh, big size does matter? And it does matter. We are using big water um, in our department. It gives us a faster knockdown of the fire. It gives us a faster primary search. Ventilation has become um, way easier and it's less heat and stress on our firefighters simply by using uh, bigger water. And I'm gonna explain how we use uh, big water. When we use big water and where we were and where we are now, uh, this is a uh, picture from Paul Grimwood's book out of the UK. And we were using that red um, backpack there. You see with the yellow hose on the left, that was only putting out 500 liters per minute. Putting out 500 liters per minute will really only really let us fight a fire that's in one room residential. Well, we know once it spreads beyond that room, flowing 500 liters per minute, we are truly um, into quite the firefight. Anything above that, um, we're in big trouble. So we had to kind of um, look at different hose and nozzle packages. We did, if you look at those three lengths of blue hose, they're 65 millimeter hose, with a one and one eighth tip. We're now capable of flo flowing 1,000 liters per minute. That's 264 gallons per minute. Um, that 1,000 liters per minute allows us to fight those big fires. Um, what we like about this hose and nozzle package and having the 65 millimeter hose is that we can actually double the output put simply by changing what's on the tip. Um, before, we were going in with a, small, a smaller size hose, not being able to put out the fire, having to restretch bigger lines um, to try and put that fire out. Now we go in with the bigger lines. If we can't put the fire out, we simply replace what's on the tip and we've been really successful. So I'm happy to say we can put out 2000 liters per minute um, on our fires. Here's a video of what I like to call the punch is putting 1003 liters per minute. That nozzle is rated for 350 kPa. But just watch what happens here. This fire actually goes out um, in less than six seconds. Also notice the smoke, it's actually a, a steam. I'll just let the video play here. So this firefighter, there it is, it flashes over. He's taking the ceiling, taking the back wall, and then this fire's done. That was a fully involved um, unit. When we took this video, our fire investigators um, believe that that smooth bore 100 foot reach of stream would actually wreck all the, all the evidence as far as trying to um, investigate the fire. What was funny enough, and you can see in that video, that nozzle hits the ceiling, 
some circular motions, it hits the back wall, but that candle that started the fire actually didn't even fall over. And that fire was quickly extinguished within that six seconds. What I'm also gonna talk about today, I wanna to talk about the Bresden distributor, the floor below nozzle, a 38 millimeter, an opposing tip nozzle, portable ground monitor, exterior tack, and our CAF systems for catastrophic failures. Uh, a lot of information here, um, feel free to reach out and I can explain a little bit better. Here are some of our options for wind impacted water. Um, when we talk about um, high rise firefighting and the firefighters can't make the push down the hallway, making a push down the hallway means we're, we're advancing our hose lines, we're trying to get to that fire unit door, we're trying to uh, uh, put out the fire, but we're being driven back by heat. When this happens, we need to start hitting it uh, and using different options from the outside. So if you look at the video here, you'll see we have a couple resin distributors flowing. We have our flow below nozzle. We have our um, opposing tip nozzle. And we're getting 120 feet coverage on this building. So these are multiple different tactics. We probably wouldn't have them all going at once, to be honest. But this will allow that initial crew making the push down the hallway it allow them to get inside that fire unit for the final extinguishment once we knock it down from the exterior. Uh, when we do do special tactics, um, the advantage of bringing up that 65 millimeter hose is we simply replace what's on the tip. So in this picture here, we call this the Bresden attack. Uh, each firefighter is going to be responsible for their length. We're going up with three firefighters. And to do this special attack, we simply replace what's on the tip. And in this case, it'll be the Bresden distributor. When we do the, when we use the Bresden distributor, we're actually going two floors above the fire. Um, we don't have time in this presentation to talk about um, how to do that um, um, safely, but I can tell you if it's wind impacted and you have to do the Bresden attack, you are on the same side as the fire. The same wind that is impacting that fire is the same wind that's protecting you from two floors below on the same side. That's a topic for another day. When we do special tactics, and you'll see uh, on the right there, it says fire attack standpipe riser. That riser is, is something we're not going to touch. We're going to allow that first in crew to use that riser. We're going to allow a next in crew with a backup line to use that riser. But for special tactics, we're not going to take from that riser. We're going to the opposite side. We go two floors above on the resin attack um, because we don't want that hose to melt off uh, and burn up when we first put it out the window. So we're gonna put out the window five feet, we're gonna get it going, and uh, we're gonna allow, uh, drop that nozzle down onto target. Here is a, uh, a real fire that we had, and you can see down below, we tried to flank attack it, our aerials couldn't reach it. Um, we ended up going right to the roof, dropping this resin distributor off, lowering it onto target, you can see the blue and white flames in both pictures. Um, that fire was acting as a chimney as it came up the outside of the building. No big deal. We uh, had a one on one tip at the top and we were able to put this fire out quickly. If you're thinking in your head, would this tactic have worked at uh, Granville in England? Absolutely not. The heat release rate from that fire, um, would the, this attack would definitely not have worked. Um, here's us. Uh, this was uh, at H Rock. It's a high rise firefighting conference in Pensacola Beach, Florida. But that's what it looks like. I'm flowing the Bresden distributor. I'm two floors above the um, um, fire floor. And there's that Bresden distributor spinning. If you look at the video in the center, that's the Bresden distributor, what it looks like, like from the outside. It's fantastic because not only is that wind pushing that water into the unit, it's also cascading down the outside of the building. It's giving me 60 feet of coverage. If I want more coverage, like a larger balcony or larger windows, um, I can simply add a second resin distributor. And the video on the right that's now playing, um, that just goes to show you even on a deep balcony, we're getting water uh, on the fire. We also carry a three nozzle pack. Um, it comes with a floor blow nozzle, a 38 millimeter Bresnan, Bresnan and our opposing tip. Again, our initial crews and all crews that go in our buildings are bringing the same hose every time. We're simply replacing what's on the tip. This helps uh, us get water on the fire um, faster. The reason why this um, 
nozzle package break is a breakaway is because we have some narrow stairways, we have revolving doors, uh, lobby doors, we have uh, smaller elevators in some buildings, and we needed something that we could uh, break and then reassemble once we got it up top. Also, in the way this it, this can be carried, one firefighter is carrying three options. It's, fan, it's, it's fantastic. So here's one option. It's the floor below nozzle, and it is a breakaway. Uh, our flow rates with the floor below nozzle are 900 liters per minute. Uh, at 350 kPa nozzle. Our initial attack line is 350 kPa, the floor below nozzle is 350 kPa. So it's easy for us to do our hydraulics and it's consistent. Uh, you can take a picture of that or a screenshot, but this is um, you know, the meat and potatoes behind the floor below nozzle. It, it, everything I just said, it talks about it in there with balconies and windows and all, uh, all sorts of different problems that you could face. And I'll show you what it looks like here. So here's the floor below nozzle flowing. Now we do get three stories um, worth of coverage in this particular uh, video. It is meant to do one story, but let me show you a uh, fire here. This was a fire in Toronto, uh, November 15th, 2019. Um, the floor below nozzle in the picture on the left, you can see just after it's been shut down, that uh, nozzle at 900 liters per minute was able to put out three stories worth of fire for a very quick knockdown. Again, it goes back to using big water, low pressure, high volume. When we use the floor below nozzle, and this picture does look similar to the Bresnan attack, um, but it's actually not. We're now not going two floors above the fire. We're going one floor below. Just like you know, when I talked about special tactics, we have to use the opposite riser of what that fire attack team is using. So we're one floor below, we're on the same side of the fire. So we're, we're protected by the same wind feeding that fire. We're protected by the same wind when we're working one floor below on the same side, and we're gonna go to work. You won't be on air for this. You'll have your uh, PPE and your STBA, but you are working one floor below and you'll go for the quick knockdown. Picture on the left is what it looks like from the inside. Uh, the video on the right shows what it looks like from the outside, but we're going to tag that header and that lintel and make quick work of uh, that fire. And that'll allow that entry team to actually make progress for the full extinguishment. Uh, here's a picture and I'll, I'll play the video here in a second. Uh, this is the floor below in the center, two resin distributors on the outside. When we use the um, floor below nozzle inverted or upside down, it does have a lot of nozzle reaction. So we have to be careful. But in this case, we're using that 100 foot reach of stream. We're using uh, the resin distributors and we're just practicing for a exterior cladding fire. Hope that day never comes, but um, that's our strategy in our city. If you also look how wet that building is we are we are getting a total of 120 feet worth of coverage we've also done with that floor below nozzles we do have the capability to add a 38 millimeter bresnan uh hidden boys uh chase ways cock lofts, attics um very difficult sometimes uh to get a traditional uh jet stream or nozzle onto it so what we've done and you'll see by this video here is that resin distributor no nozzle reaction in this case but we can put that into a void and let that spin especially on steep residential house houses uh, if that fire is vented or we have a hole uh, we can simply slide that nozzle up drop it in and let that giant sprinkler head in the attic ceiling or void uh, do its do its job we also have a straight pipe with a 38 millimeter resin on it that'll flow 500 liters per minute Again, that 350 kPa, we keep everything consistent um, so it doesn't um, confuse us in the, in, the, in the moment of combat, if you want to call it that. Uh, there's another screenshot. You can take a picture of that if you'd like, but that talks about uh, using the Bresden uh, to flank. We can use that in the ceiling, the walls, the floors. Uh, we do use a four-inch coring tool for that. We cut through metal, wood, and concrete. And again, we're putting 500 liters per minute on the fire with no nozzle reaction. Here's a video of what it looks like here. Uh, just imagine that inside a door, a wall, a ceiling, some type of empty void, 500 liters per minute, that's a lot of water coming out of that nozzle. But it's something that a normal um, nozzle can't do. Um, this is what our coring tool looks like. Um, it's battery powered, no cords needed. We can take it to the roof, 
um, wherever we want to take it. We're only reliant on our batteries, which is fantastic. And that just goes to show you that um, it, it works. What I like about the coring tool, it gives us a nice clean hole. So um, we're protected as firefighters. Um, we're actually reducing the amount of smoke that's gonna come out of that hole. And now we can simply put that nozzle in and hopefully keep, uh, keep the area we're working in um, free from smoke and heat. This is the opposing uh, tip nozzle. Uh, some departments call it the cock lock nozzle. We don't like to um, call nozzles with a specific name to it because it kind of pigeonholes uh, us in our thinking that, hey, it's a cock loft nozzle. It can only be used for cock lofts. So we're calling it an imposing tip nozzle. So it can be used for cock lofts. It can be used for attics. It can be used for exterior cladding. It can be used for hidden voids. What I like about this nozzle, again, it works with our hose and nozzle package and it has 80 foot reach of stream off each side. So we have 160 foot reach of stream. This is a half inch tip. So it'll cut through cellulose insulation. It'll cut through the bats. And here's a picture of it in operation here. That half inch tip uh, is, is quite the water jet, to be honest, uh, very powerful. And it's great for hidden voids. And you can see us spinning it there, uh, 360, we have options. Uh, high rise buildings, uh, sometimes that chase way on the exterior uh, of the cladding where it meets the building, it'll be about two inches. So that half inch tip, uh, we can certainly get in those hidden voids and get uh, some water application. Uh, here's some information again, feel free to take a screenshot of that for your, for your notes, but it works fantastic for balloon frame construction and joist spaces. Just imagine that in a 10 foot um, ceiling height of balloon frame construction, in a 10 foot wall, but you're getting 160 feet of water uh, penetration. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. And in this video here, just watch um, when, we, when we describe this nozzle, it does have no nozzle reaction, but that half inch tip is hitting that uh, concrete. You can see no nozzle reaction, um, but it, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, here's a couple uh, pictures that people have sent me. Uh, there's high rise hose. There's your opposing tip nozzle. That's a storefront with residential uh, on top. And it was a, a stubborn fire, a hidden fire. And they were able to get that opposing tip nozzle inside uh, for a quick knockdown. Uh, the video on the right, again, uh, looks like some floor joists in, in spaces, but uh, a tra traditional nozzle just can't get in, down and across. This nozzle allows us as firefighters to get that 160 foot reach in that hidden void and, and put that fire out. Um, this is maybe a little bit off topic, but um, if you look in the picture, uh, this, this um, still shows about, talks about a reaction time. It talks about our um, re, uh, reducing that time by staging equipment. And if you look in the background, and this is on the eighth floor, uh, right behind that ladder is all our uh, nozzle packages. It's staged, it's ready to go. If that initial team can't make the push down the hallway, that those special tactics and nozzles are only two floors below. We simply gather that and put that plan um, into an attack. We don't have to wait for crews to bring it from the fire truck. It's already pre-staged inside the building. Uh, this is another video here. Most uh, departments all around the world ask um, what type of reach of stream are we going to get um, from these special tactics. So in this case here, it's a seven story building. Again, the 350 kPa, uh, 350 kPa nozzle. Uh, we can hit seven stories under normal operating pressure. So you see the video on the left there is playing. That firefighter is going to open the nozzle. Um, this firefighter has no nozzle reaction because he knows how to take nozzle reaction to ground. Effortlessly, he hits the seventh story header, lintel, gets that water inside that apartment. That allow for a knockdown and the crew in the hallway can now make the push uh, once they've knocked that fire down a bit. It's absolutely fantastic. If I add another 50 kPa, I'm getting to the eighth story. Now, when I talk big water, um, that last video um, was that nozzle you can see 
uh, on the host packs. The next nozzle I want to talk about is the one that's not hooked up, but that is doubling our output. It's giving us 2,000 liters per minute. Uh, fantastic reach of stream. This is for commercial high-rise buildings, or nowadays some of our residential high-rise buildings are the size of um, commercial foot plates, but this nozzle um, gives us that uh, 2,000 liters per minute a quick, quick knockdown and it's maneuverable. It's absolutely fantastic. And this particular nozzle will actually shut itself off um, if we lose the tip. We simply open and close it again and we're flowing. I'm going to talk about catastrophic standpipe system failures in high rise buildings. This is kind of a world um, problem right now because we, we need to get water uh, really over 50 stories. And if we can't, if there's a catastrophic failure, what are we going to do? So this is what we're doing uh, at present. We have four aerosol extinguishers. We can use them for basements, hydro vaults, and um, high-rise buildings as well. Each of these units um, will disperse for approximately around a minute. So we carry four on each high-rise truck. Gives us a minute per extinguisher, so four minutes um, uh, off the hop. And we back that up with a compressed air foam system. That compressed air foam system puts out 600 US gallons of finished foam. So we can core a hole in a wall, ceiling, or floor, floor, plate, floor space, sorry, and fill that room full of foam. But we're gonna first attack it with those FXT extinguishers to knock it down, to give us the safety to be able to get inside and um, put that fire out. If we look, uh, this is just a still shot of how we go about doing that. So we need to get door control. So you'll see that first firefighter has door control. The next two uh, firefighters have the four FXT extinguishers. They're gonna throw them in one at a time to give us at least four minutes of fire suppression. The next firefighter is the backup with the calf system. And that firefighter, once those FXT extinguishers knock it down, that firefighter will finish the job with 600 US gallons of foam. To the right of that firefighter, you'll see a stair climber. Uh, that cast system that we use weighs 300 pounds. That stair climber is battery powered and can lift 350 pounds. So it'll climb stairs and lift that cast systems for it. Um, on one battery, I've gone uh, seven and a half stories up and seven and a half stories down just on one battery. So if we had a couple batteries, I'm not sure what height we could get to, but it would, it would certainly um, help most cities uh, combat their problem with catastrophic failures. Uh, like, prom like I promised uh, at the end of this presentation, I have different tactics and options for high rise firefighting. If it's a clear hallway, if it's a dirty hallway, or if you've come up short or you're unable to reach the fire unit because of uh, bad fire conditions or it's too hot to make entry, um, I've added the equipment needed, the hoses needed. Um, under water supply, uh, I put a little cheat sheet on different stretches like well hole stretches, exterior stretches, improvised standpipe off aerial devices. Um, you know, the list goes on and on, but that will help you um, going forward on maybe what equipment you need or maybe uh, uh, equipment that you already have. Uh, that's the end of my presentation. I have the website, highrisefirefighting.com. Uh, my time is always donated. It's free. And uh, hopefully I can share information with you um, going forward. Thanks for having me. Um, my email is highrise332 at gmail.com. And I'm Brent Brooks.